The Russia Longitudinal Monitoring Survey of the Higher School of Economics is a series of nationally representative annual panel surveys of Russian households conducted since 1994. The survey sample is formed on the basis of a multi-stage probability stratified sample model. The RLMSHSE is an international research project conducted by the National Research University Higher School of Economics, Demoscope Company together with Carolina Population Center of the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill and the Institute of Sociology of the Federal Center of Theoretical and Applied Sociology of the Russian Academy of Sciences. It is the longest longitudinal household survey in Eastern Europe and Asia. The survey provides unique data for social scientists. The content of the RLMSHSE questionnaires is in line with the best international practices, thus allowing for calculating general indexes and making cross-country comparisons. The RLMSHSE is the first microeconomic survey in Russia that became an alternative to state statistics based on accepted scientific standards of sampling. The Russian Longitudinal Monitoring Survey of the Higher School of Economics is the only panel survey of households in Russia that allows to track households and individuals over a long time period. The sample size varied over the years. The first wave of the survey contained 3,975 households and 11,289 family members living in these households. From 4,000 to 8,000 households and from 11,000 to 22,000 respondents and participate in the survey every year. The sample of RLMSHSE is based on dwellings. It was developed with the participation of the world's leading experts based on international survey standards. The sample represents the population of Russia at the household and individual levels. The sample design allows for both cross sectional and panel data analysis. The survey collects data on a variety of topics. The multi-purpose RLMSHSE combines numerous topics into one integrated study and provides detailed measurements of income and expenditures, social well-being, investment behavior, employment structure, migration behavior, health status, family planning, educational history, the value system of Russians, and their perception of the transformations in the country. The core questionnaire remains practically unchanged throughout the whole observation period, while additional modules were included in different waves. For example, a reproductive health module, a nutrition module, or a module for the history of education and employment. In addition, comprehensive data on family relations over the long time period allow researchers to study relations within one generation as well as intergenerational linkages. The survey provides many opportunities for both specialized and cross-disciplinary research. The survey collects data at the community, household, and individual levels. There are special questionnaires for each level. The individual level includes child and adult questionnaires. Adult questionnaires are for individuals 14 years and older. The special roster table is filled out for each household. It contains information about all household members, as well as relations between them. If a household member is not present during the survey, the roster table documents reasons for their absence, including causes of death of previously interviewed respondents. Preparing the data file for public use goes through the stages of coding, double entry verification, data cleaning including comparison to previous waves and calculation of indexes. Most logical inconsistencies in the data are eliminated during this process. As a result of this work, three levels of data become available for users. Community data file. This level of the data includes region-specific food prices and community infrastructure data for each surveyed location. The data are obtained on special request. Household level data. And individual data. Individual data files include information collected through adult and child questionnaires. Users have access to both files for each wave separately and to the combined database for all survey years. Users also have access to codebooks with the list of all questions ever asked in the survey, questionnaires with variable names, code lists, and other supplemental materials that can be useful for working with the data. Let us consider some features of RLMSHSE data files. In data files for each wave, the first letter of the variable name indicates the survey wave number. 
For example, the letter Y means the 29th wave, conducted in 2020. The next letter of the variable name means the section of the questionnaire, for example, B is for family information, J is for work. The letter for the section appears in the header of each page of the questionnaire. Each file includes several identifiers. ID int variable is the unique identification number of an individual. All respondents who have taken part in the survey at least once have their own ID int. You can use ID int to combine the data on the same person in different waves and trace each person's life path. Each individual also has IDI, which is the unique number within each wave. So, in the 29th wave, this variable has name YIDI. The unique number of household within each wave is YIDH. Each data file has special additional variables useful for working with the database. Among them, general statistical data, region, type of settlement, and others for each observation in the file. Both individual and household files contain these variables. Some constructed individual indicators, age, educational level, occupational group, for each person who participated in the study. These are new variables calculated based on several variables from the questionnaire. Let's look at some of them in more detail. PSU. Primary sampling unit, it is the first stage of sampling, region. Site. Settlements number. Popul. Population of the settlement. Status. The type of settlement, regional center, any other city, urban type settlement, or rural settlement. Orexam is an indicator that shows whether a given household is included in the representative sample of the Russian Federation or not. Cases when Orexam equals 1 are useful for cross-sectional analysis, but others, where Orexam equals zero, can be used for follow-up purposes only. The files also have post-stratification weights. Post-stratification weights adjust the proportion of different demographic groups in the representative sample data of the RLMSHSE for each wave in exact correspondence with the proportion of these groups in the general population, namely, in the 2010 census of the Russian Federation. When calculating these weights, the following parameters were taken into account for individual data, age, gender, type of settlement, urban or rural population, for household data, household size and type of settlement. Post-stratification weights allow an analyst to turn the prop option of different demographic groups in RLMSHSE data to exact correspondence to the proportion of these groups the 2010 population census. Anyway, we leave the use of post-stratification weights to the discretion of researchers. Among constructed individual variables, you will find the following. Age. Age of a person at the time of the interview. Please note that respondents' full dates of birth are closed for the sake of anonymity. However, the file contains the month of birth for children under 14 years of age. Marst. Marital status. Eduk is a detailed classification by educational level, consisting of 23 categories. Diplom. A group by educational level of six categories. The occupational variable is an indicator that consists of 10 professional groups that correspond to the international classification ISC 08. Let's look at this variable in more detail. To collect information about the type of activity of respondents, Following the standard practice, the questionnaire for adults includes a block of questions related to job position, occupation, usually performed duties, company where they work, the type of activity, entrepreneurship or not, and so on. The answers to these open-ended questions are entered into the database as text variables. Based on these answers, codes are generated according to the code list built on the basis of the international standard classification of the occupation. The text variables are removed from the user file. ISCO codes are also assigned to questions on major from the education block as well as to several occupation-related questions, such as previous place of work and occupation of parents, that were included in the adult questionnaire in select waves. Missing values are an extremely important part of work with the data. The data files have several codes for missing values. Do not know. Refusal to answer. No answer. 
In exceptional cases, additional codes are used. They also require separate research attention. There are various methods of working with missing values. This topic is beyond the scope of this video. We would like to bring users' attention to these missing values and emphasize the importance of dealing with these values in the analysis. We also want to remind our users that we are always ready to answer questions that arise during the work process, some answers you can find in the section Frequently Asked Questions on our website. Thank you for your attention. We wish you success in your work.